Hi, this is Shadi and in this video I'm gonna talk about one of the most legendary rivalries in Judo Jiu Jitsu world if you want and that is the rivalry between um, Matei Montanabe and Hajime Isogai. Now I've talked about this trilogy very briefly in my Tanabe video but I was covering his entire life and his entire challenges so it was a little bit hard to go into details. So. And Hajime Isogai was also mentioned a few times in my videos, specifically in the Oda and Kanemitsu rivalry of their schools. So if you don't know the Kosen style competitions or the Nanate Judo style competitions, it's actually school against school. So teams, they would go head to head. It wasn't like, a, like the PJJ or the Judo competition. You have solo and you have teams. So it was just high school against uh, high school, the higher level schools against each other. Kosen actually means uh, it's referring to a specific technology school. So it's kind of like saying Harvard Judo, for example, if Harvard had a particular rule set of Judo. So it's actually Nana Te Judo, you know, the style where you take the fight to the ground and you end it with the tap. So Hajime Isogai was actually the referee uh, of the schools between Oda and uh, Kanemitsu and Kanemitsu invented stuff with his uh, students like the triangle choke and the knee bar in 1921 and 1922 in order to beat Oda because Oda was the reigning champion or his team was the reigning champion for uh, several years I believe it was seven so someone locked the knee bar from Kanemitsu students and everyone was outraged because the Ashigarami it looked a lot like it it targets the knee and it breaks it so everyone was uh, opposed to it but Hajime the referee back then it was in the early 1920s he actually allowed it so let's go back uh, two decades earlier when Hajime Isogai was competing himself and he had a trilogy of matches against uh, Matei Montanabe, the Fosen Ryu Jiu Jitsu master. So let's provide a little bit of context uh, for this trilogy. So it was in the Butoku Kai in Kyoto where they held Jiu Jitsu Judo uh, competitions. Schools would compete against each other, you know, the Daito Ryu, uh, Ryu Takeuchi Santo Ryu, and other schools, Fosen Ryu, also Shinyu Ryu. So Tanabe was actually competing there. He was one of the best. He had only lost uh, one time, I believe it was against Kim Kimotsuki, which uh, caught him with a Deashi Harai, the foot sweep, and he landed on his head and got knocked out. And that's how he lost. So uh, before the trilogy with Tanabe, he was going head to head with Hiruka, and he caught him with a Ashigarami or Ashi Hishigi. And before he would tap, his leg would break and everyone was outraged against leg locks because they were quote unquote dangerous. And one of them was Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo himself. Uh, he wanted to forbid leg locks from these Jiu Jitsu Judo competitions because of the lasting damage. And Tanabe was of course against this idea because you know, his argument was that it's all dangerous and I agree. For example, the Rufino dos Santos uh, incident that I also covered on this channel, his career was ended due to an uh, arm bar, I believe, or an arm lock. So it wasn't even a leg lock. And I, I agree, everything is dangerous. You have to be very responsible, whether you are um, the UK, you, you, if you feel something, you tap immediately. And if you're you know, the Tori, you would be very responsible. You. Uh, apply pressure progressively etc etc so the leg lock was banned and it was time to go head to head with uh, Hajime Isogai and the first match was in Tokyo in 1899 so uh, again, under the referee of Masaki Samura from the Takeuchi Santoriyu Jiu Jitsu and this is how he wanted to take the fight to the ground. So first he went for the Tomoenage or the circular throw um, and Hajime Isogai blocked it. It's a kind of like a tactic. You wait for them to block it and then you lock the Ashi Garami. But uh, he, he went for it, but he realized it was banned. So Hajime Isogai had to defend till the end of the clock 
and then it was considered a draw so he didn't want to for the fight to go to the ground he kept his base uh, solid because he had other tricks like the juji jimmy or the cross collar choke uh, etc so uh, shortly after they had another uh, rematch and then uh, it was in fukuoka it was it was also in 1899 and tanabe was on the defensive side this time it was it was very hard for him to take him to the ground and you know go for chokes or you know pins etc etc but isogai was very threatening uh, standing because he's a kodokan judoka so he was very skilled at throwing he was third down already and his hanegoshi was just deadly and it was threatening uh, tanabe the entire match but the clock ran out once again and um nobody was declared the winner it was another uh, draw but the second match it was tanabe that was put in a defensive uh, position while isogai was defensive in the first match so the third and final match between the two was in may of 1900 and it was in okayama japan it was in the hometown of tanabe uh, the match had the referee uh, kotaru imai which was uh, not very good friends with isogai but nonetheless isogai was has been training and really preparing for the ground against uh, tanabe he was training with kaichiro samura a ground expert and also a judoka from the kodokan but also uh, from the takenouchi santoriyu jiu-jitsu school so uh, there were several jiu-jitsu school in the past that uh, you know took the ground aspect very serious not just the fuzen ryu uh, so the fight went uh, isogai had improved his ground skills greatly so it was expected to be a very good match so the fight obviously went to the ground and it was a very long uh, battle which first uh, it looked like isogai was dominating but then you know at Matai Montanabe was having a very hard time you know uh, dealing with Isogai so he tried to take the match out of the uh, fighting zone in order to force a restart but Isogai would not let him do that and he would drag him back in um, this was different from today's jiu-jitsu for example if today's jiu-jitsu like BJJ competitions you would find yourself either on the edge of the surface or outside the referee would drag you in the same position to the middle and you start from the same position but uh, back then it, it would have to restart kind of like the judo matches of today they will start um, from square one or a basic restart so uh, he would take him to uh, the edge of the mat but isogai would resist and take him in the middle you know no restart he would constantly dominate the fight uh, and then of unfortunately the fight ended in a third and final draw but you know if there was uh, such a thing like you say gachi or referee's decision uh, clearly isogai would have won two out of the three so the first one he was very defensive the second was dominant and threatening with the hanegoshi and the third he was mastering uh, the neiwaza so after the fight had ended um tanabe he was interviewed and asked like what happened uh he said and this is a true story he said that he was suffering from hemorrhoids that really affected his performance um i don't know if he was saying that uh, to justify uh his him being dominated because you know no one would check for hemorrhoids but uh nonetheless it's uh, a very interesting uh, detail of the story and also he congratulated isogai for the effort so keep in mind these characters are all very much uh, connected either they were referees someplace or they were contestant in another um, it's very nice to see how they interchange and uh, compete against one another for example isogai was not against leg locks he even allowed it later on in the du uh, rivalry of Oda and Tanabe uh, I'm sorry Oda and Kanemitsu 
I would I would say it's nice to have all these legends competed against one another from different types of schools so I hope you enjoyed this uh, little uh, history or story it's not a history it's a specific event that has happened in 1899 and 1900 so if you have another thing to add please uh, share it down below this was Shadi and thank you for listening